Good morning and welcome back to Viv's Vibe. I'm Vivian Camille and today we are talking about how I come back from running after a long break. It's been about two months since I've consistently run. I've definitely run some, but due to an injury from Lag Canyon, I've kind of been put out for the last two months. I also had to plan a wedding and whatever. So I am here today to talk through some of the things I do to get me back on the running wagon. This morning I'm up early so I can start journaling and get my head in the right space. Everything starts in the mind and so if we can figure out what's going on up here, then it's going to make getting back into running a lot easier in my opinion. If you're not into the journaling thing, that's fine. Can this idea skip to the next one or on your walk as you commute into work? Think about why you haven't been running. Is it because you've got three kids and there's no time? Is it because you've eaten nothing but Cheetos and watched Netflix for the last two weeks and you're feeling really sluggish and don't wanna to have to start over again? So just kinda of work through why you're not running. For me, it helps me to identify the why behind the reason I'm not running, to see it on paper, so I can come up with a strategy to get rid of that why. The second part of this is positive aspects of running. I make myself write continuously for five to 10 minutes just about running and the positive aspects it brings to my life. The joy of running, why it's so fun, what is it that I like about running, why do I love this sport so much, what about it makes me feel good, and what do I wanna feel? So some examples are running builds my muscles and bones, it makes my heart strong, I wanna feel energized, I want to feel healthy, I want to feel whole. I love running because it connects me to friends, it connects me to nature. Those are just examples. You can go on from there, but I just make a point to give thanks to all the positive aspects about running. So, those are the first two things. Get your head in the right place by one, asking, why the heck am I not running anymore? What's the block there? And two, writing out some positive aspects. And then I guess, of course, once you figure out those mental blocks, work through those but um you got to be really honest with yourself in that um otherwise it, it why well, do it you know all right that's enough about journaling i'm going to continue to do that until it's time for yoga and then we will move on to another tip all righty i am on my way to yoga this is one way i find momentum one, it makes me get up really early, and two, I have no excuse to hit the snooze button because I've already paid for the class. So I'm constantly asking myself when I'm trying to get back into running, what's the best way I can find momentum to get me propelling forward towards my goals again? Um, so something as simple as making a smoothie instead of eating a muffin in the morning can get me some momentum to make me feel a little more healthy and a little more on track with my goals. Yoga is one of those things for me. Um, it gets my blood flowing. Like I said, I had to get up really early this morning to get there. And so, yes, it's the first step in moving towards my running goals, though it isn't running related is kind of like saying, oh, I'll go run one mile, and then it turns into five. So that's kind of what I'm looking for here when I'm saying I'm looking for momentum. Just something small to get me moving in the right direction. And we just build on this momentum. And so I'm gonna head to yoga, and the day will take shape from there, from the momentum that we have created. motivation to get out the door and run. You don't have to adopt a dog, but you certainly can foster one. Um, I fostered one before when I was injured and it was a great excuse to get out and move. Um, you don't necessarily have to run. You can walk with your dog and that's movement, which is always beneficial. Don't wanna play games up with the moves. Don't wanna meditate, girl. Just a little two miles. 
mile out and back run. Nothing crazy. But these are two things, especially in like the first and second week of getting back into running, I have to remind myself often is one, to take it slow. I'm not the same runner I was before Black Canyon. I've taken almost two months off of not really running that consistently. Um, so the second part of that is don't set expectations for your run and for your performance. It's really easy for me to feel like, well, I need to just hop right back into what I was doing, 75 mile weeks and doing speed work and everything. But especially for the first two weeks, I make sure to not put any expectations on my runs. I have to remind myself that it's okay to walk and for me, I'm not walking because it's physically hard. It's just, I have to walk because um, my knee won't run. So it's okay to walk. And two, I just need to enjoy movement. I just need to enjoy being outside, being on the trails or wherever, enjoying time with my dog. That's it. Those are my two things for the running aspect of getting back into running. It's really easy to put those expectations on yourself and to feel like you have to go full speed ahead or to pick right back up where you were as you were training. But that's uh, not super wise because that usually ends up either one, burning you out super quickly, which I've done, or two, putting you back in the hole with injury, which I'm gonna guess you probably don't wanna do. <laughs> part of the show where I give you a quick little life, hip, and knee update. If you are not interested in this and want to know the rest of the tips, skip ahead. To fill you in, the last month I have been planning and executing said wedding. I've been on a honeymoon and then my wedding was DIY so um, I've been getting the house back to normal. We still have like I think 10 tables that we need to sell. Um, and they're just around the house. So, if you need a table, you know who to talk to. <laughs> there were some people who wanted to see wedding pictures, so let there be wedding pictures. As I talk, those will just be on the screen. Enjoy. As far as my hip and me go, I have seen a PT. I've been seeing the PT twice every week, and we're doing a lot of body work. Um, with ART and we're seeing improvement, but it's taken like a month. So it's just a really slow process We're having to work at one leg at a time because there's so many Muscle imbalances and things to like work out of each muscle um, So it's just a process um, But I started after Black Canyon I wasn't able to run hardly more than three miles without getting that same knee pain and now um, today I was able to run seven um, so there's been improvement, which is good. My hip, I got an MRI on that, and it's just a really bad case of bursitis, so not great, but we're hoping that the ART will kind of fix the muscle imbalance and pull the bone kind of off of the bone right now, because that's kind of what's happening. It's a bit of a hip impingement. Um, so hopeful for that. I'm not committing to Leadville until the end of May. I'm gonna see if I feel capable of even training for that race. But for now, I'm just kind of living one day at a time. Okay, enough of life update, back to the tips. Alrighty, so this next part is not so much a tip, it's more some information I recently learned. I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the process of me creating at least one month of like my training plan before I hop into like real Leadville training. The general rule I learned is after two weeks of not training, you lose five to seven percent of your VO2 max. After two months of not training, you lose about 20%. And after three months, you lose about 25 to 30 percent of your VO2 max. So what that means and kind of how that translates into building a training plan is after one week of not training, you're fine. You can go straight back to running the same mileage you were running. After two weeks to a month, you should only run about 60% of the mileage you were running. And then if you're going from two months to three months in that range, it's wise to not run more than 50% of the mileage you were running previously. If you've gone over three months of not training at all, you've got to start back at ground zero. For me, 
I have been running on and off. Um, another general rule is in order to not lose fitness, you can work out three times a week to maintain fitness at that same level of intensity um, that you were training previously. So I'm kind of in a middle place, but I've been running about 25 miles. So this week I am going to be aiming for 38 miles. I was mostly running 70 to 75 mile weeks. I've maintained some running, not much, but some. So from here, I'm gonna increase my mileage by 10% each week, which is the safe and recommended general rule. So the second week, I'm gonna run and shoot for around 42 miles. This next week, I will shoot for around 46 miles. And then my last week of this month, I'm gonna go back to around 42 miles, probably closer to 40 miles, honestly. Um, just for like a rest kind of week. And then how am I gonna like get to this? Well, I'm gonna take the training plans I've used in the past that have worked. So I'm just gonna kind of make a hybrid of this uh, 50K plan and just kind of see what like the week looks like at a glance and kind of base my daily mileage off of that. And the combination of this and the training plan I was on leading up to Black Canyon 100. And this is just a base, like this is just the like getting back into running. And for me, I just need to see numbers on the calendar and have something to shoot for. So the first week here on this 50K training plan is six, six, four in the morning, four in the evening, six with some hill repeats, four miles on a Friday, 13 on Saturday, 7 on Sunday. Those are all numbers that I'm comfortable with. That 13 miles, I won't probably be able to do consistently all the way through, but I can run walk it. So I like that for this first week. I made it a little more clear. 46, 40, those are the goals, the goal mileage. These are good standards. They'll give me a good place to start and I can either bump things up or move things down. When I say bump things up, I'm not gonna be increasing any of the mileage. I don't want to do that. Again, we want to take things slow. We don't want to jump in too quickly, but I can increase intensity or potentially run trails that have more hills and variations in the elevation. Um, but the chances are it'll be more like bumping things down if for any reason I'm not feeling good because I am still coming from injury and that's not completely sorted out. I'm not saying this is the right thing to do or the right way to do it. This is just how I apply the principles I've learned. Each day will add up to the final total. And then you see here another thing that I like to do that I learned with the Camille Heron training plan was implement two-a-days. That's a really good way to break up the run and give yourself a little more recovery in between. Give it a try if it works for you, great. It certainly has worked for me. I really like two-a-days and it's one of the fastest ways to get back into running. I hope this makes sense. If you have questions, you're welcome to comment down below. Again, this is not a perfect training plan, but it's a start. Now we are going to get dressed again and head to Blackett's in Subido Canyon. And that is where we will learn our last and final tip. I've been deep down stuck in the gutter I've been off the grid for days I've been lost just trying to forget her But I wake up and nothing's changed I've been gone down lost in the letters Trying to get back into place I've been losing ground in the lost and found Cause I let it slip away to waste and this freedom just left me haunted and all my reasons start to fade cause I thought it wasn't worth it yeah I thought it was too late I was so burned out trying to ease my mind like there was nothing left to say
Today is a new day. It got too dark to film yesterday. But if you didn't already guess it, the last and final tip is find friends to run with. It's probably one you've heard a ton, but have you done it? Have you done it? Have you met with a group? I will make a video about how to find friends to run with. Um, some of the methods I've used, especially if you are new to the city and don't have any connections, there is a way, there are many ways to find friends. It doesn't even matter if you stick with the people the whole time. This Black It's Run, I didn't. I kind of wanted to run alone a little bit of it, so I did. But we all planned to start in the same place, we ended in the same place, and along the way I got to run with people. And at the top we all had a girl powwow, watched the stars, and then headed down together. But meeting with people keeps you accountable, it gets you out, and friends often have different trails they like to frequent and run, so you might run a new trail. It's always better and more fun every now and then to run with somebody rather than run alone. Thank y'all so very much for watching this video. If you liked it, if you thought it was helpful, please like it down below and subscribe to my channel. Comment down below any questions you may have or thoughts, tips on how you get back to running after being injured or eating too many potato chips or being pregnant, what have you. I look forward to seeing y'all later and happy, happy trails. Bye.